Now the mang manganese dioxide, I'm, I'm going to do it all at once, so I didn't uh, extract any of it yet. It's too dirty to be getting little samples out to see what kind of uh, yield I got. But just to let you know, MnO2, this is the uh, molar weight or molar mass, whatever you want to call it, 80, 87 grams per mole. The equation called for four moles, so I multiplied it by four. Now remember, we divided by six for everything. So I divided by six. I should have 58 grams for the reaction, but you know that stuff sticks into the filters. You know, man, you might end up with only 48 grams or 40 grams. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do mine all at once, so I don't really know. All right, if you're going to use this just to make acetic acid. Okay, you're going to drip sulfuric acid on the, the, the potassium acetate salt. I have sodium acetate, but same thing. Um, you can have this option. You can basically just evaporate all the water off, and you would have potassium acetate and potassium carbonate. You can see down here I have both of them there. So instead of sulfuric acid plus your acetate, you would have the same thing, sulfuric acid plus your acetate, but you'd also have this it's going to react with. But the only thing it's going to do is make uh, CO2 and some potassium sulfate. So it really doesn't interfere with making your acid, you know what I mean? You would need three moles for this because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So you'd need three for that, three moles, and you'd also need a half a mole for your to neutralize that. So you'd need three and a half moles of sulfuric acid and if you did the same exact experiment I did here, you'd have to divide that by six to tell you how much sulfuric acid you needed. Because remember, we divided everything by six at the end. And that's it. You wouldn't have to worry about recrystallizing it or if it's pure or if it's this or that. You just evaporate all the water. All the salt that's left, you take it all. Um, but keep in mind, if you do that, an acid and a base this makes salt water. So if you do this, you, you can't make glacial ethanoic acid. You know what I mean? It's going to have some water in it. But if you don't mind having a little bit of water in it, you can easily just do what I'm saying. But you have to be careful. It does liberate uh, CO2, and you don't want it to you know, foam up and get out of control. There's my some acetate, potassium carbonate mixture. I'm going to put it in here. And right, I'm going to suck all the water out. Well, anyways, this is what crystallized out first, and uh, it's about 26, 27 grams. Now, I should have got 49 if it was, you know, a perfect reaction. But remember, this was my first attempt. Don't think that just because I didn't use acid that, uh, you know, the aqueous permanganate reaction doesn't work good. It works just as well. You just have to reflux it maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes more or something like that. But uh, the reason why I got such a crappy yield was because I didn't put an ice bath under the uh, pot when I was adding the ethanol, which was the very first step. And I didn't have my condenser elongated for the reflux and for adding, you know what I mean? I should have had that longer than just a small condenser. Anyways, uh, just because I think this is potassium acetate doesn't mean it is. It is like liquefying though, right on this thing, man. What's the deal? The heck? Uh, so I threw it in here. Uh, this was the part that I didn't recrystallize. I don't know if you can even see that on film.
it's all liquid anyways uh, first let's see what it does in some acid because if, if it's no carbonate then there's no going to be no fizzing it's just acetate you know what I mean you know no fizzing Yeah, there's some fizz in there. Just a little bit, though. You throw a big clump in. Eh. That isn't fizzing that much. Maybe a lot of it is potassium acetate. That big chunk I put in there, it really smells like vinegar. Well, let's try this. Oh, wait, I gotta dry it. You can see nice dry white crystals. Um, I got 28 grams there. I'm going to recrystallize from water. I had 27 plus one gram I left in the solution that it was I was going to discard. Uh, but that wasn't pure. This should be 76% uh, the acetate and 23% the uh, carbonate. So when I do this, put it in the ethanol, the anhydrous ethanol, it will dissolve all, you know, it'll be pure. It won't be as much, but it'll at least be pure. The problem is I only have 100 milliliters of dry ethanol, and you can see there's still no two layers formed. Um, but anyways, I'm going to put them together. I only have 100 milliliters. So I only took half of my yield here. So I only have 14 grams here instead of 28. Well, I don't see a biphasic mixture coming about, but you never know. That would ruin it because then the potassium acetate would just go into that water part. You know what I mean? We don't want that. We want it to stay in the ethanol. Oh, this is beautiful. I'm going to put Starbar in to stir this up a little bit. So I'm just going to stir that for a while. Well, the potassium acetate and carbonate uh, mixture has been stirring and sitting in here for a while. So I'm going to filter it out and hopefully the acetate is in solution. And the potassium carbonate is out of solution. As you can see, I got the last bit of uh, potassium carbonate on there. I'm going to suck it through dry. We'll evaporate that ethanol off and uh, dry that up and weigh it up. There's your potassium carbonate that I filtered out of the ethanol. Eight grams. Now here's the other stuff that uh, most of the ethanol is evaporated, and that's what you're left with. You're about ready to filter it. I wish I you could get a good shot of it.
I don't know if you can even see this. Those are some nice crystals. Anyways, I'm not going to um, do a yield for this. I mean, it, my yield is crap. I mean, it's like 10, 20 percent or something like that. Um, but I hope I told you all my mistakes so that if you try it, you could do a better job. You know what I mean? And the next time I try it, it'll definitely do a better job. Um, but I did like this potassium carbonate in the uh, ethanol thing. I love this idea. I think most of this is that I filtered out. Some of that, I bet, is not potassium carbonate, but just potassium acetate that didn't have enough time, you know, to go into solution. That's all. I didn't, you know, I only had a little bit of ethanol. That's why I only did half of, half of the stuff that I had. So if I would have had more ethanol, I think this would have been a better, it definitely made a pure, none of that potassium carbonate went into the ethanol, that's for sure. Anyways, have a great day, and always remember, science is great.